there's all kinds of things that makes the Blues Cruise, you know, really cool as, as, as gigs go. But the thing that sticks out to me and always has is the, is the fact that everybody plays together. All the all the time. You know, the story has it, you know, that the, when the one of the first cruises, that some of the musicians, at, at late at night, you know, were out partying and decided to take over at one of the stages and just started jamming, you know, and it was like a, it wasn't a designated jam. It wasn't something organized at all. It just kind of spontaneously happened, and then, uh, and then. Uh, you know, people started showing up for it, and it became sort of a the main event. Now, I think uh, the the pro jam on the on the deck in the back of the ship in the middle of the ocean, uh, under the stars. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> happening at starting at one o'clock in the morning. You know, is perhaps the 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 main event that day. You guys just join in. Said, Tom, you ain't nothing but overgrown food. I'm gonna leave you. I'll leave you behind. Well, yes, sir. And I said, baby, let me tell you, a good fool is hard to find. Take ten cave cavemen back in the Stone Age, okay? Ten. One of them takes a club and starts beating on a log like this. Mm -hmm. Eventually, somebody else is gonna pick up another stick and he's gonna beat on the same log. Pretty soon, you've got two guys doing it. The third guy wants to do it too. You've got mutual group arousal. Yeah. All of a sudden, then everybody's in the game. That's where jamming came from. Everybody doing the same thing at the same time. It goes back to since time immemorial. It comes, starts, I think, in the early jute houses and playing out in the streets and whatever. If you had a good song going and you're on a street corner and all of a sudden people are gathering, you're going to sing it for two minutes, or if it, you keep singing it, people keep dropping money, then you keep singing it. Sessions really start in the 1920s. During working hours, musicians are working with their individual bands, sometimes playing music that they don't particularly approve of, but that pays their bills. After hours, when everybody else has gone home, including the paying customers, they can get together and play with whomever they choose, playing the kind of music that they want to play. like the icing on the cake to see the musicians interact in ways that they're not used to. One, two, three.
up there doing what we did today, and when I get with Larry McRae and we play and we just have fun, and when it blends, uh, yeah, it's very satisfying. <laughs> What's, what's the feeling, man, how two guitar players like you and I who've never met before can have this, this dialogue together? Like I might say... anxious people who want to get their turn yeah so that's what you have to settle down you know you have, you have to fire up some people you have to settle down some you know? yeah like to play as if I'm a singer. That's the way real music is. It's much, much easier for it to flow if, if everything about it is natural and you, you let your own personality come out yeah. in, in your music. <laughs> It's just a matter of taking turns. When it's your time, go ahead and shine as hard as you can. And uh, when you're before and after that time, you try and back up the other guy as tastefully as you can. You just use those old three musicians' commandments, you know, C sharp, and B natural, and when in doubt, lay out. I call it musical compatibility yeah. and musical telepathy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because when you listen to your fellow musician play, you can envision just by listening right where your job or where you would fit in beside what he's doing at that particular time. When it works, it's magical because you have great musicians creating a unique sound in an environment that pushes them and challenges them because they want to play well for their peers. 
fun I've had on this boat has been uh, not the organized jams, but uh, just walk in the piano bar and Leon Blue will be p playing there, you know. All right, well, basically we're here for me to steal some stuff off of Reverend Billy C. Words. This, this of course, puts me in the, the uh, unenviable position of uh, having to show the great Commander Cody uh, that, that I'm actually uh, going to teach him anything at all. Oh, come uh, but, on now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we use this what we call the one four five progression. I charge extra for more than three chords. Actually, I charge. You know, if it goes four to four chords. I I, I I allow the one relative minor. Oh, okay. You go for all right. At any rate, I, you know, it's, I use it in the bill afterwards. <laughs> do these kinds of things night after night the musicians all have to stay in one place and they can't nor do they when they're on land but for seven days none of us can go anywhere and so you make the best of it and you get the chance to see these guys play